And for let us pray that the fathers will always stand in the gap to protect their families from every physical or spiritual attacks. Let us pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, that our fathers, Lord God, will always stand in the gap, will always cover the gap, Father, to protect, to stand, to stand against the wiles of the devil. Father, Lord, we know, we know the wickedness that is around us that can only be overcome with prayer. Father, and I pray that as the fathers pray, mighty God, their families will be protected as they go out and as they come back in. Father, remember the prayers of your children, and I pray that you fulfill their request that they lift up to you. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, let's uh, read Genesis chapter 3, and let's read from verse 1 to 7, and some other person will read uh, uh, verse 1 to 7 and verse 11. Genesis 3, 1 to 7 and 11. Amen. Go ahead. Did God really say you must not eat the fruit of any tree in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. She wanted the wisdom it could give to her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. 11. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? Amen. I want us to see the character of Adam, the first father. The first human father. Adam, he lived in the presence of the Lord. He heard from the Lord. He conversed with him. But the character of Adam is that he was disobedient. He heard from the Lord. And, I mean, it is a blessing that you are in the presence of the Lord and you can converse with him and hear from him. But he disobeyed. You know, and his disobedience brought a lot of calamity and tragedy to the world to this day. You can't imagine what women go through when they have childbirth. And the Lord said that a man has to sweat and till the hard soil in order to eat. I can't imagine what it would look like if Adam did not disobey the Lord. What an enjoyment we would have been going through. But now, it has turned the other way around because of this word. Let us pray. Mighty God, we are lifting up our fathers and we are praying, Lord God, that as they are heads of the families and as they communicate with you, as they commune with you, Father, Lord Jesus, they will not, they will not be people who harden their hearts. Lord Jesus, sometimes when you speak to them, sometimes when probably they feel that what you are speaking to them is so hard, that they will not look at your instructions as being impossible or too hard for them to do, but that they will trust in you and do exactly what you want them to do. Father, we pray that you will do it for our fathers. In the name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Father, we want to bless your name and exalt you for all the prayers that we have lifted up to you, Lord. And we pray, Savior, that you bless our fathers who are your children. Father, every, every, every earthly father is a son to you. And as they seek your face, as they read your word, Father, we pray that you direct them yes, so that they will not lead the rest of the family into error. No. Father, Lord Jesus, we are lifting them up and we are praying that you, your will be done in their lives. And we are lifting up the rest of the service to you, Lord. We depend on you, O Holy Spirit, Father, to lead the service from the beginning to the end. Father, conduct all the songs that we are going to sing, the prayers that we're going to pray. 
we lift up the message to you. And Lord, we depend, Lord Jesus, on your word, the truth of your word, to have our way right with you. Father, you say the seed that fell on fertile soil is the one that actually germinated and bore fruit. And as we are in your presence today, let our hearts be that fertile soil where the seed will fall today. And Lord, you bless us, Lord Jesus, to sow your word in our hearts that it will bear fruit and that it will manifest wherever we are. Let our, let, let our attitudes be modified because we hear your word daily. Lord, we thank you and bless your holy name. We commit the rest of the day to you that it will not only end here, but we will continue to worship, praise, and magnify your name in our homes. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen.
We declare our everlasting love for our Heavenly Father. We appreciate Him. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. You know, I'd like to think of this as really God's day because He is the ultimate Father, the greatest Father of all. So this might as well be His day. But we know that every day is God's day. But happy Father's Day to the fathers in the house, to the fathers watching, to the fathers everywhere. Praise the Lord. We are so excited to be in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we truly appreciate you. Holy Ghost, what a comfort you are. Yes, Son of God, what a wonder you are. Jesus is a wonder. I love it. It's a wonder, wonder, wonder. A wonder-working God. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7, it says, The righteous who walks in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. I tell you, if you are a righteous father, you are blessed. Your children are blessed. Your children's children are blessed. The key there is righteousness. And this righteousness, you don't get it out of your own working or doing. It's a free gift that you can receive. If you're a father watching right now, I want to tell you something. You see, you cannot really be the father that the heavenly father created you to be unless you invite him through his Holy Spirit to help you. The Bible says without Jesus, we can do nothing. So I want to encourage everyone listening, every father, every male figure, every future father. See, when you are righteous because of the righteousness of Christ, it says you are blessed and blessed are your children after you. Wow, you know, Father's Day is an interesting day. Uh, if you look at most popular holidays in the United States, Number one is, can you guess what number one holiday is? It's Christmas. You guessed right. Good job. I love you guys. Christmas is the number one holiday in, in the United States and probably around the world. Uh, but here in the U.S., number two is Thanksgiving. Wow, who got it? Look at that. Thanksgiving, Atiana. Good job. You guys know your stats. Number three is Mother's Day. Wow, look at that. Right after Jesus and Thanksgiving, we have our mothers. Mothers are just so wonderful. We love our mothers. Number four is Easter. That's a good one, right? Easter is the number four. Number five is Independence Day. And I'm thinking, come on now. Where's the father? He's in here. Where are the fathers? Finally, fathers come in at number six. Father's Day. I'm actually happy that fathers made it to number six. In previous years, father was all the way number 17. So it has really gotten better. You know, fathers, I don't know, fathers... Somebody help us fathers. It's always about mothers. When you see young men and women come up to testify, they say, oh, I love my mother. My mother is the MVP. On Mother's Day, we take care of our mothers. We say, mommy, you don't need to cook. Just take it easy. We'll take you out. On Father's Day, they say, father, you go barbecue. <laughs> the father does all the work. On Mother's Day, we go take our mothers. Say, no, we'll treat you. We'll take our mothers to the mall. we buy them nice things, jewelry, flowers. Say, mommy, we love you. On Father's Day, we forget about the fathers. You know, if, if by chance the father gets a gift, it is because you go to the gas station as you're taking gas. You go, you go and want to pay, and then you remember, wait a minute. Oh, it's Father's Day. Uh, counterman, please give me that cup over there. That says, world greatest dad. That's how we finally get our gifts. God help us, Father. Say amen. <laughs> and, and, you know, it sounds funny, but the reality is fathers have done this to themselves. Really. And, and it's because our fathers are... 
somewhat lacking, and may God help us. We are not quite present. See, let me read to you a passage in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. I love it. And the hearts of the children to the fathers. We love that. That's what we need. But he says, if you don't do that, there's a consequence. Lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. So if the hearts of the fathers are not towards their children, there is a curse. And, and I tell you, we are seeing that curse. We are experiencing it even in our day. It's the truth. And this is a call to fathers. We have got to be present. Are we there for our children? Let me give you some dreadful stats. Only here in the United States, 24 million children, and these stats may be accurate or not, uh, no, they may be a few years old, but <laughs> I bet you they're not far from the truth. 24 million children here in the U.S. grow up without their biological fathers. That's a huge number. Seven out of ten children born to African Americans are born to single parents. Wow, we need our African American groups to, to step up. Hallelujah. Wow, I just see some wonderful faces walking in there. We've got some family in the house this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. For those of you who don't know and I'm online, that's my uncle right there. That's the man whom, with whom I stayed in the U.S. for the first few years of my life in the United States. He just walked in, so the joy is just overwhelming right now. I'm going to lose my tracking here. Praise God. So we're talking about fathers, you know. And, and, and so 63% of suicides... 90% of rapists, 71% of school dropouts, 89% of prisoners. Now, these are some huge stats. They have one thing in common, fatherlessness. See, I tell you, brethren, when the Bible said there's going to be a curse if the fathers are not towards their children and children towards their fathers, it's the truth. And we are experiencing that. So fathers, see, many times we try to address the problem. If you are addressing a problem that you, you, you don't see or you, that you do see. Actually, you see the problem, but you are looking at a cause or root cause that you don't see. Then you are not addressing the problem that needs to be addressed. The root cause is righteousness, is seeking God, inviting God into our families. He is the heavenly father. He's the example we have to mimic. See, fatherhood is such a great responsibility. If not, it's the number one. The Bible even says you cannot come to the house of God as a pastor if your family is not all together. Because that's how important it is. Because God, when he created the world, go back to the Genesis he was the heavenly father. He created us for family. He wanted to have a family. That's why he created man and woman. And he gave us that. He says, you shall have dominion. He said, man, you as the father, I need you to be a replica of me, a representation of me on earth. So really the rulership in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on in heaven as on earth. It is through the fathers. So if fathers are not taking their rightful place or doing their duty, we have a problem. We are inviting a curse. May God help us. The women are doing a great job. The mothers are doing a great job. They're taking care. They're doing their best. You know, but the mothers can't do it all. They're doing a great job, but the fathers have to step in. When I think of mothers, right? I know it's not Mother's Day, but I love our mothers. You see, the mothers just have this influence on us. The mother, the mother carries that child for nine months. When the child is born, the mother is nursing that child for the first, what, three years? Even when the child is done nursing, you take the child to the daycare, it's mostly women at the daycare. Even when he's done with daycare, you come back home, you hire a babysitter, it's most likely a woman. Now listen how women, 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 even when you get to elementary school, elementary school, the first, second, third grade, most of those teachers are women. We are over-mothered and under-fathered. It's a good thing that mothers are stepping up, but fathers have to step up. When God spoke in Malachi, the verse I read to you was the very last verse of the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. Thank God that Jesus came with a new covenant. But in the Old Covenant, the last word was curse because fathers are not doing their job. Because when God created you, brethren, he placed the father to play a critical role. You are here to play a role. You were here, the father in the old covenant was supposed to pass on the covenant to his children. When God gave commandments, he says, Father, you are responsible for training your child, teaching him and passing on that legacy. So if you're not doing that, we're out of alignment. So this is a warning to fathers listening. 
Yes, you may have messed up, but it's okay. We are God of God of redemption, God who restores. And as long as we turn back to him, say, Lord, we need you to help us, fathers, to do our jobs by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't want to preach this morning about fathers, but I want to encourage fathers out there. Your job, your role is clear. You've got to be number one. You've got to be present. You've got to be present. You've got to be there. Children need your presence more than they need your presence. Come on now. I know many of us have the money and everything. We work so hard. The father is the provider. He's working really hard. But can I encourage us fathers? You've got to make time for your family. Make time for your children. You can give them all the gifts in the world. But if you're not there, a huge piece of you is missing. You've got to be present. You are a leader. God made you the head of the home. A servant leader. You've got to be a role model for your children. That's your role. Make things happen. Lead your family. Take initiative. Set direction and do some ongoing evaluation. When you mess up, learn to say, I am sorry. Your kids will appreciate this. Learn to say, forgive me. And learn some more. Say, how can I do better? Be a leader, a servant leader. That's your role. Be a priest. The Bible says, teach them this word. Write it on your foreheads. Put it on your doorposts. You've got to teach your family. Have prayer altars in your home. You have to model authentic worship, in, initiate family worship, encourage private worship, teach your children to worship God on their own. That's your role. You're a priest. You're a teacher. You've got to impart wisdom and build the character of your children. That's your role as a father. Through formal instruction, through informal instruction, you name it. But you have got to step up. Fathers, if you're watching, step it up. You're a lover. You've got to love your wife and love your children. Your kids are watching you. You know, we talk about identity theft. And I tell you, there's no better identity theft than kids and their parents. Kids will take your identity. I tell you, they'll copy what their fathers do. Look at many kids who grow up, they do what their parents do. So you are supposed to be that example because your kids are watching you. You've got to leave them a legacy. Be a good influence instead of a bad influence. Sounds basic, but that's the real thing. Be a lover. Love your wife, love your children, and love is spelled T-I-M-E, time. You've got to spend time with them. We can't overemphasize this. Provide tender love, unconditionally, like God in heaven loves us unconditionally. But also you've got to provide tough love when necessary. Even our heavenly father chastises us. He disciplines us because he loves us. So fathers, don't be, sit, don't be soft. You got to train up these kids. The Bible says spare the rod and spoil the child. You got to use that rod sometimes because you got to teach that child discipline. We need fathers who are present. I just read you some horrible stats. 90%, 89%, 63% incarceration, suicides, rapists. It's because there was no father figure. May God help us in Jesus' name. Be intentional. I'll close with this. Here's what you've got to instill in your kids, fathers. A bunch of C's, five C's. Instill confidence in your kids so they know who they are and whose they are. They are children of God. Instill character, the character of Christ. Godly values, confidence, character, conviction. So they are grounded in the faith. Nothing can sway them. No wind of doctrine can sway them. They are grounded in the word. You've got to do that for them. Teach them compassion. To place the needs, to esteem others more highly than themselves. See, the kingdom of God is an others-oriented kingdom. Teach this to your kids. Not always about me, me, me. Care for others, the needs of others. And finally, competence. Teach your kids to always do their best. You may not be number one in your class, but always do your best. You are the head and not the tail. You are a leader, not a follower. Do all things as unto the Lord. Teach these things to your kids. So fathers, if your kids are turning out wrong, we're going to hold you accountable. Can we get an amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I love it. So may that word encourage you fathers out there and we pray for our fathers. Father, we pray that you will bless every father. There's so many categories of fathers. You have single fathers, fathers who've lost their kids, fathers who are dead, grandfathers. There are many categories. For every single father, whatever category you, you place yourself right now, we pray that God will visit you and do some wonderful things in your family. In Jesus' name, can the people of God say amen? amen. All right. Well, this is Father's Day, so we're doing things a little bit differently, just a special day, as special as we can make this. So I'd like to invite Nathaniel up here. Uh, Nathaniel, and, and, and I don't know if he has his jacket on, but Nathaniel, I want you to come up here and read us a poem. 
that's dedicated to our fathers. Do it quickly, quickly. We don't have much time. Uh, he's going to read a poem dedicated. And this poem is written by Mary Fairchild. Mary Fairchild. So let's enjoy this, fathers, and be blessed by this poem. Come on, Nathaniel. Dad's Hands Were... Oh, Dad's Hands by Mary Fairchild. Dad's hands were king size and strong. With his hands, he built our home and fixed all the broken things. Dad's hands gave generously, generously served humbly, and loved mom tenderly, unselfishly, completely, unendingly. With his hand, dad held me when I was small, steadied me when I, was stu when I stumbled, and guided me in the right direction. When I needed help, I could always count on my dad's hands. Sometimes dad's hands corrected me, disciplined me, shielded me, and rescued me. Dad's hands protected me. Dad's hand, hands held mine when he walked me down the aisle. His hand gave me to my forever love, who not surprisingly is very much like my dad. Dad's hands were the instruments of his great, big, rugged, tender heart. Dad's hands were strength. Dad's hands were love. With his hands, he praised God, and he prays to the Father with those big hands. Dad's hands, they were like Jesus' hands to me. Amen. Good job. Thank you, Nathaniel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good job. Dad's hands were like Jesus' hands to me. I know when a little boy reads a, uh, a poem, you know, guys don't get the, the power as in a poem being read, but I hope you were blessed by that. Well, I tell you what, it's Father's Day, so why don't we do a quick quiz here as a church? Let's find out how much you know about fathers in the Bible, right? There's no rules. If you know the answer, just scream it out, all right? It's informal in this place. It's your father's house. Feel free. There's freedom. So quick quiz. Who was the father of David? So it looks like... Uh, the answer here is Jesse. Is that right? Yes. Bam, Jesse is right. If you need the proof, the passages are right there. First Samuel 16, 11. All right, whose name means father of a great multitude? Okay, we've got some people who know their Bible in here. Is it Abraham? Bam, do I see the next slide on Abraham? Bam, bam, there we go. Whose father was so pleased to see him that he gave him the best robe and killed the fatted calf? Are you sure? Is that not Joseph? Prodigal son. Is that the right answer? Bam, it is. That was a trick question. It is the prodigal son. He was so happy to see him, he killed the fattest calf. All right. Who was the father of Abraham? This is a good one. Terah. Are you sure it's Terah? I thought it was Laban. What is it, Terah? What's the answer? Terah is right. Genesis eleven twenty seven. 27, that was the father of Abraham. I wonder how many fathers you guys know. Go back to the Old Testament and read all those genealogies. You see, father of this, father of that, grandfather of that. I tell you. Why should children listen to the instruction of a father? Okay, so let's see if that's the right answer. It is correct, to gain understanding. The other ones are kind of good answers too, but uh, the Bible talks about gaining understanding. So young men and women... If you don't listen to your fathers, I don't know what kind of understanding you're gaining. So you've got to listen to your fathers, especially your fathers in Christ. Amen. Because obviously I don't want you listening to a father who just hates everything about Jesus. I don't know that I encourage you to listen to that. But uh, we need our fathers to be in Christ. Now, honor thy father and mother is one of the Ten Commandments. Which one? We've got a seven, six. This is a tough one, it looks like. All right. And I'll give you a formula that you should never forget. And what's the answer? It is the fifth, the fifth commandment. And let me tell you why you got to remember it. When, if you look at the commandments, they're divided into two. When the Bible talked about love, I was, when Jesus came and summarized the Ten Commandments, he says, I'll summarize all those commandments with love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself. See, two people, God and neighbor. The first four commandments are all about God. You know, you should have no other gods but me. Worship my God on the Sabbath. You know, don't bring any other idols. The Lord that God is. The first four commandments are about God. Then from number five, in the middle, it's others. Honor your father. Don't steal. 
another person's thing. Don't kill another person's person. Don't, you know, covet another person's wife. Don't covet your neighbor. Others. You see how that is? And Jesus just broke it down into two. Simple. So always remember the honor your father is the first one because it is the, fam the family is the foundation. Anything that's others oriented starts with your family. So honor your father and mother is number five right there in the middle. Now you're going to forget. No, right? Good. I love it. Which father came to Jesus to seek help for his little daughter who lay at the point of death? Oh, okay. You sure it's Jairus? Let's see the answer. Jairus is correct. There you go. So hopefully this is for those of you who didn't know these answers. Hopefully you're knowing them now. And if you don't know them, if you're not scoring at least 50%, then you need to go back and start reading your Bible. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> who was the father of James the disciple? Is that the right answer? There you go. James and, and, and Peter, or what was it? James and somebody, the sons of Zebedee. Which of the following was used of God to mean father? The answer is Abba, Abba Father. Who does James say is the source of every good and perfect gift? You sure it's not the Father of glory? What's the answer? Father of lights. Yes, he is the source of every good and perfect gift. Our wonderful Father above, the one we should imitate. Why should a father not provoke a child to anger? You sure it's discouragement? Is that the answer? Let's hear it. That is correct. Wow, church, so far you have 100%. There's only one more question. So in case they should become discouraged. So fathers, please do not discourage your children. Uh, don't provoke them to anger, right? You know, you discipline them, but you don't provoke them. Finally, who was the father of King Saul? Remember Saul? Kish, Kish. Is that right? Kish is correct. Well, I'll give yourselves a tap on the back. Good job, church. You scored 100%. Good job, good job. Let's see the great job there. Perfect. I love it. You guys know your fathers. I love it. Okay, let's get another poem. This time it's an original from our brother Francis. He called me. Francis, come up here and give us an original poem dedicated to fathers. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Um, I don't even know how I should start this. How should I start this? Just, just the way I want? Okay. Okay, okay. So, I'm going to go ahead, right? You probably thought I forgot or never heard. But every lesson that you taught me, I remember every word. You taught me how to be strong every time I was reprimanded. You taught me how to work hard and never show up empty-handed. A father steps up to do what is right, even if he's the only one who is willing to fight. He never complains, but is diligent in trying to find a way. I would even say he's like a superhero in many ways, always trying to save the day. A father doesn't like to brag or boast, especially one who knows his worth and knows that his family loves him the most. And, and this, is, this is an excerpt. So that's the end of the poem. This is an excerpt that I was, I was just looking around and, and thinking about how influential the fathers in our midst are. And I just wanted to highlight two this morning. So here it goes. It feels like I haven't seen my dad for a year, but it's worth to note he gave me the major keys of life like Pastor Foyer. When I was about to give up, he would tell me, oh God, go win. Now I know one day I'll be a great father like Brother Remy Ola William. <laughs> Francis, you can't leave us hanging like that, man. That was the highlight and you just had to keep going. And you stopped. You got more for real? Come on, let's hear it all, man. He just held us hanging. Remy, hola, wo yin. And we were screaming and then he just left. Okay, this is the, this is the last one because I love all of you fathers, right? I hope God blesses you from Monday 
to Monday. Okay. And soon I'll make my pastor very proud one day. Amen. Let's give this man a clap offering. Come on. Wow. Thank you, Francis. Thank you. Now I want to do something interesting here. I want to ask some fathers in the house. And this was not planned. We did not reach out to any fathers ahead of time. So you're going to have to answer the question impromptu. All right. So fathers, I'll put you on the spot this morning. So don't feel bad. Just answer from your heart. It's simple. I have a question for you. As a father, what have you learned from your children? So I'm just going to call up any father right now. Brother Remy, why don't you come up here? You're the man of the day. You just heard Remy Olawoyen. Now, I know your kids are really young, but there's something you got to learn. It doesn't matter. Just about one or two things or one thing. You don't have to take too long. Maybe two minutes max. Tell us what you have learned from your children. What have they taught you? Good morning, church. As a father of a young kid, I've learned a lot. I've learned to be patient. I've I've learned to be tolerant. I've learned to accept messes, you know, (laughs) like scratching the wall. Tearing the papers on the floor, <laughs> Pour, spilling some tea, some ice on the floor. So I've learned a lot as a father. All right, thank you. I love it, Brother Remy. Straight to the point. My highlight is patience, patience, tolerance. Next question. What has given you the most joy as a father? Brother Ernest, I want you to come up here and talk to us. What has given you the most joy As a father. You see, Brother Ernest is a unique father in the house. He's got five kids. Five. A whole village. My God. And they're all talented. Multi-talented families. So you better be overjoyed. Tell us what has given you joy. Praise the Lord. The greatest thing that has given me joy is when my children are walking and uh, accepting the word of God. That's a man of very few words, but powerful. As long as his kids are walking and accepting of God's word that he's teaching them, that brings him the most joy. In fact, there's a Bible passage that talks about that, that the father's greatest joy is when his children are serving the Lord. I don't know the exact quotation, but it's out there. I know there's a verse like that. So thank you, Brother Ernest. Thank you, Brother Remy. Let me do something right now, real quick. I want to do some testimonials. Let's hear from you guys. Again, nobody was planned for this, but I want you guys to talk about your fathers. So I don't know, do we have a raise, any hands, any volunteers to talk about their father very shortly about why you love your daddy? Any volunteers? Because I'm going to call you out. All right, Brother Sam, come up here and tell us why you love your father. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. The reason I love my dad, the reason I love my father is because he's not just my father, he's everybody's father. (laughs) So sometimes, you know, I have to share my father, but then I realize what type of heart he has to even be that type of person. A lot of people, they're stingy with what they have, they're stingy with their children, with their time, with their money. My dad gives all of that and more out of the goodness of his heart. Just every, not only every day, not only every moment, but he tries and strives to go above and beyond in everything he does. So for me to emulate that, if I can emulate a little bit of that, then I know I'll become the father that I want to be one day. And that's like my dad. So, Dad, I love you. Thank you for everything. You're amazing. You're the best father a man could have, and you're the father of this church. So I want to thank you for everything. Thank you, Brother Sam, for that heartfelt testimonial. All right, uh, uh, I'd like to call on Dr. Grace and Tatin. Just give somebody the baby. Come tell us why you love your father. And uh, we know your father is no longer here, but you got to tell us why you loved him while he was here. Remember, you don't have to be too long. Somebody help out with that little baby. Or just go ahead and bring the baby with you. And just so those of you who don't know, just know that this is my sister. This is my younger sister. Same blood, same father, same mother. And it's a joy to have her here with us. Amen. So this is your welcome right now. <laughs> well, thank you. It's good to be back. Many of you know I was here a long time ago, and it's good to be back, but uh, I had a wonderful father. Um, 
There are many things I loved about him, but one big thing is, you know, we had him, I had him for 15 years, and this is, that was more than, we lost him more than 15 years ago. We lost him many years ago. But I still remember a lot of the lessons he taught me. Um, and one of them was, just do your best. In whatever you do, do your best. Another one was, uh, just be generous. He was a very generous person. And, uh, and I think that has carried on with me and with his family. And I, I thank God for my dad. And for all of those who may have lost their fathers too, um, we thank God for the hope of glory, right? The fact that we'll see them again. Yes. Amen. Oh, thank you, Grace. That was wonderful. And that is true. That's, I've shared this before. My dad taught us, taught us generosity. And I tell you, Grace, uh, she's uh, just a unique sister. She's, a, she's this big old doctor, cardiologist. Look, I'm shouting out my sister. But she makes all this money, but she gives a lot of money away as well. And, you know, there are many times we have family asking for help, and they'll come and say, man, we'll need help. I say, oh, man, Grace, you help me out here. And she'll just give out all the money and take care of all of us. You know, we don't have to worry about it. And that's just the, the heart that we learned from our father, really. He was really generous. And he was one of those who never, we never lived in a lavish or big old house. But the money he made, he saved it up. And, and uh, that's why I teach about lessons about learning how to save and investing. And, you know, when he died, most of us were not in college. But, but he had so much money left over that we could go to college here in the U.S. with the expensive tuition. And so it's a testimony that we don't live for ourselves. Let your life be a life of influence. Let your life not be full of stuff. Let it be full of meaning. Amen. See, all the money in the world, you can have all the money and all that, but if there's no meaning, if you don't invest in other people or leave a legacy, it's pointless. So when you're gone, no one's going to remember that, but when you do the things you do and infect, affect lives, it blesses others. Now, I have another question for that is Number one, or it's number three, really. Question on the board. What is the best thing about being a dad? So just think about the best thing about being a dad and also think about the hardest thing about being a dad. Now we're running out of fathers in this house. We're running out of fathers in this house. I'd like to call Uncle Ambrose. Brother Ambrose, come tell us, Dr. Ambrose Ewane, come tell us what the best thing about being a daddy is and maybe what has been the hardest, if you can think of something. So you are welcome, Dr. Ambrose. Come up here. Come up, come up, come up. Let's get this going. The best thing. We love our daddies in the house. He's not only a daddy, but a granddaddy. <laughs> so talk about all of that. Amen. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning. As uh, Pastor has said, I'm a daddy and a granddad. Yes. The best thing of being a daddy is to love your children. Love and persevere with them. Yes. Because it's not easy to raise kids. Since it's not easy to raise kids, you have to be persevere. You have to persevere and you show all the love to, 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 your, to your children. And the hardest thing that I, I've gone through, I went through, or I know most parents go through, is that the upbringing of your kids to make sure that they go, they, 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 they go the right direction. But upbringing is, very, is not an easy thing. So you have to show a good example. Yes. If you don't show a good example, the children will go astray. So the hard thing is that make sure that, make sure that you, you, the children are well brought up. And if you don't work hard, if you don't work hard to bring her up, they'll go astray. That's right. So that's the hardest thing for me. Amen. I love it. Thank you, Brother Ambrose. Let's give him a hand. It is not easy to raise kids. Because here's the thing. You train up a child in the way he should go. But at the end of the day, this child has his own will. Right. He's his own person. He'll do what he has to do. He wants to do or she will do what they want to do. So it's not easy. He's so right. But our job is just keep doing it. Keep teaching them the way and, and praying for them and praying that even when they go astray, that God, the Bible says, when you train up a child the way you should go, when he gets old, he will not turn back from it. And so let's keep praying for our kids, especially those who may be wayward and who've chosen to go their own path. Yeah, no fault of the parents, but let's keep praying that the kids will come back to Christ. Amen. Amen. I have one final question for that is in the house. I don't want to spend too many questions here. The last question is, what encouragement do you have for future daddies? So... I want to call this one up again. I want to call up my uncle. You know, I don't want to say brother because it's so funny. I want to call my uncle, Uncle Richard Chungong. And like I said, this man is the one who housed me, took care of me when I came to the U.S. in the year 2000. And uh, I lived with him in Missouri. 
And he's just a great, great uncle. Great uncle. He's been a wonderful, wonderful man. And I'm so overjoyed to see him here. It's been many years since I've, since I've seen him face to face. So, so good to see you, uncle. Tell us what encourage young fathers and upcoming fathers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a pleasure. I mean, uh, before I say anything, I've longed for this day. You know, and uh, I can't say anything because it's so emotional. And it happens that I happen to be here on Father's Day because when I talk of father, I learned a lot from their dad. Who I am today, because of him. Just as it, Gracie said, I've never seen somebody so generous. He will, I mean, he will give whatever for nothing, especially for an African who had the influence to take bribe to help people? Never. He doesn't take nothing from nobody. He lets you, he gives you all his best. And so when he passed away, it's like a part of me left, but it is good to know God because when you know God, you know one day you'll meet again. So the encouragement I can give uh, young fathers is that the key to everything is love. No matter the... Hey, whatever storm, because the Bible never told us that because you surrender your life, you will not have, you not go through storms. Storms will come, but the storms are there to encourage you, to strengthen you, to take you to another level. Don't ask why me, why me, why that? Because to be honest with you, I was surprised when the father came before he went and passed away. What he was, what we talked about. In less, than no, in less than no time, the four of them came to the United States after he passed away. Was it not God? But it's because of the impact, just as she said. He said, the impact that you leave on people. This, the real meaning of life is to make impacts on others. It's not about accumulating wealth, having so many houses, cars, and all that. It's to plant seeds. If today I am who I am, it's because of him. So I'm encouraging young fathers, when you have love, no matter how tough it is, go to God. Don't run away from him. Go to him. Because a lot of us sometimes, depending on who you hang out with, you should hang out with friends who are there to encourage you. Good friends. That's why you should pray before you pick your friends. Don't just pick anybody as a friend. Because in every, in every occupation or uh, 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 profession, there's good and bad ones. Pray. But when you have love... No matter the ups and the downs, you always know focus. And only, only that focus can take you. When I look at them today, I'm so proud. I wish their father was here physically to see how they have turned out. Because you know what? It is because of the love that he had for others. And that's who they are today in life. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank, you. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you. Man, you're going to make, make us start crying here on the stage. Hallelujah. We love, we love, I love, I love, I love him. Uh, so it's what a wonderful day today. Just like that. I didn't plan this. I didn't know what was going to happen. I got a bunch of family in the house. Just like that. He's a surprise. He didn't tell me he was coming today. You know, I just saw him walk through the door. Amen. Well, I tell you what. So let's do, let's, I think we ought to pray for our fathers, right? And, and, and we have so many wonderful fathers. And that was Pastor Bakke. I want you to come up here and join our pastor, Daddy Akane. I want you to just say a prayer for fathers. I want you guys to come here and two of you are going to pray. And we're so blessed that Pastor Bakke showed up this morning with his wonderful wife. I tell you, today is just a great day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so you guys are going to pray. I want you to pray as much as you can. Pray for, for old fathers, grandfathers, young fathers, single fathers, those who've lost their wives, even those who've divorced, that God will help them come back to restore something. Wedlock fathers, struggling fathers, fathers with dead children, people who didn't know their fathers, deceased fathers, soon to be fathers, you name it. Just pray a prayer upon them, brother. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. You know, we were in vacation with my family, so we, we, we came back yesterday, and I said this morning with my wife, we're going to visit the church. Yes. And today we are here, and uh, I'm very, very happy to be here. Yes. Hallelujah. 
You know, and uh, when, when the pastor was asking different, you know, questions about father, children, you know, I was thinking about my kids. Those who remember when I came here for the first time in the United States, yeah. my kids, they were little, huh? And then uh, we were speaking more French than English. Yeah. <laughs> so today you can see, I, I want to ask my family to yeah. come here in front. So you're going to see my daughter, they were still little. My son came, he was four years, and then my, no, he was six, and then my second daughter was four, and then the last one, she was one year old. So today, all of them, they are really big, and then it makes me to look a little bit old too. <laughs> Hallelujah. So... Come on, come on, come on to the stage. This is a special day. I want each of them to introduce themselves. Where is the giant? <laughs> he, 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 he went somewhere. Somewhere, okay. Now you can drive by okay. yourself. You know. wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Good morning. My name is Martha. We know each other. I'm so happy to be here today. I keep postponing, but it happened today. Amen. Um, hello. Um, thank you for inviting us to come back. It's really great to see everyone again and different. <laughs> um, yeah. What's your name again? Andrea. Andrea Bake. And this is Eden Bake. And then I have a brother who's a soft bake. He's not here today, though. Thank you, Pastor. So very soon I will be maybe grandfather too. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, time passes very, very quick. And every single moment that we can have with God, we have to really appreciate it. Amen. And like somebody was saying, family is, is, is a cell where God plants everything that we can appreciate and project it in the society. If you don't have that love in the family, it will be very difficult, you know, to, to, to experience it, you know, in the society. That's why you will see many people who are bitter in the society start from the family. So uh, I, I, I want to pray this morning that all the Christian family should be really, you know, surrounded with love and the joy of the Lord, you know. That's what the Holy Spirit can bring in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit will move in our lives because we believe that Jesus is still alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, you know, today the church is trying to lose that objective that Jesus is alive. You know, we want to let you know, the society take over us. Jesus is alive. Amen. And that we have to, you know, to convey this power to people to understand that Jesus is the same. Amen. Hallelujah. And I was take, talk, talking to my church, I was saying, I was telling them that family cannot change. Family is not about men and men. Family is not about women and women. If, 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 uh, if the government, you know, American government want to put me in jail for that, I will say thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not trying to hurt you, no. but that's God's will. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm here today because my mom and my dad came together. Amen? So, those who are against it, they're against the nature. Huh? You know, churches don't like when they talk about it like that. But we're going to stand and we're going to pray. We're going to pray. I'm not preaching, I'm sorry. You see, Pastor, I'm trying to preach. <laughs> Please. Yes, Father. I will do something. If there are couples here, if there are couples here, if there are couples, I want the couples to be together. You know, to have a strong father, you have to have a strong mother. You don't believe that? No, we believe it. Huh? We believe it. A strong father comes from a strong mother. I know that the pastor will not disagree with me on that. When I see mommy... It's because of her that the pastor is today. Yeah. <laughs> what is he? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So all the couple, 
you. I want you to be together. I will make a prayer for you so that you can be strong and powerful in this society, in America. God will give you victory Amen. in this country. And your children will be successful in everything that they are doing in the name of Jesus. So let us pray. So couple, just hold your hands together. And I will pray all the fathers stand while I'm praying in the name of Jesus. Lord, I worship and I praise your name this morning because you gave us this opportunity, God, to worship you in the Father's day. God, as a church, we come before you and we pray that this prayer that I'm lifting up to you will bring fruit in each family in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for all the fathers now. I pray that the spirit of Jesus will be upon them in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will move upon each life so that God, no matter what the devil will do in your life, will never come to pass in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will lead them in wisdom, in testimony, in the name of Jesus. So that God, those who don't know you, looking upon this Father, they will see the image of Jesus. Lord, thank you because this morning, I can pray also for the couples. God, I know that the success of the father come from the mother. God, I pray that the couples of the church will be more stronger and be, oh God, together so that the devil can come and bring them apart or bring something that will bring them apart in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that the couple will be more stronger to, oh God, raise up your children and Teach them, God, your word in the name of Jesus. God, thank you because this morning you, you can hear the prayer of your church and you can bless, oh God, the couples and the father this morning in the name of Jesus. God, I want to pray also for the children that are, oh God, far away from your word. God, I pray that they will come back because the Holy Spirit would minister in your life in the name of Jesus. God, those who, don't lack, those who lack wisdom or those who lack, oh God, your knowledge, you will bring them back in the name of Jesus. God, thank you because, oh God, you can answer our prayer this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I've prayed, amen. amen. May God bless you. Okay, let me also pray for what I'll call wayward fathers. They know how to give birth, to give, make women pregnant, but they're abandoned. We pray today that you'll bring them back. That they will come to the one who is the father of all fathers. Bring back all those men in America, especially our African-American brothers. Because Many of them, over 80%, have been to prison or are in prison right now, according to statistics. We change that trajectory in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that the young men who are, being, who are being raised by single mothers, they will not follow the way of their wayward dads, but they will follow the way of Jesus. We take over this, con this con country of America, all the nations are like a drop of water in a bucket. So we are praying in faith, believing that there will be a change. That the boys who are born in every family, in every culture, in every background, would grow to be fathers who will imitate the father above. We thank you that you've heard our prayers. And you're doing a miracle right now in this nation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. Dr. William Ekane. He is our servant leader here at New Life Fellowship Global Ministries. And by the way, if you want to know anything about us, go on nlfglobal.org. That's our website. All the information about us is on there. Uh, our resources, we have lots of resources on there. We have... Uh, books, you know, meditation books and things. So just go on there and, and feel free, have a good time out there. 
And uh, you, can only, you, can, you can also join us not only on Sundays, but on Wednesdays. We do Bible study. We dig into the Word. So Wednesdays, we invite you. We do Zoom. All that information again, is on the website. Uh, we do the Zoom on Pray. Uh, you can call. It's a simple phone number. Call us at 7 p.m. Most of our meetings throughout the week are 7 p.m. Eastern. We are in Georgia, of course. So 7 p.m. Pray with us on Friday. Just call that number. Just call for an hour. Saturday mornings, we pray again at 9 a.m. in the morning. So pray with us. We love to pray. It's important to pray. And uh, we support as a church missionaries. For those of you watching online, we, we are a mission-based church. We love our missionaries. And, and every month, we highlight uh, one of our missionaries. This month, we're highlighting uh, Donovan and Kathy Barron. And they are serving uh, right there in, in Nepal, South Asia. So uh, we talked about, we gave a report to you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, really, the reason we do all these things is to encourage you in your giving. You know, as you give, it is more blessed to give than to receive. I know we don't try to extract money from folks, but we give because we are grateful to what God has done in our lives. And we give towards his work. These missionaries are out there outside of their comfort zones. They could have been here with fancy jobs, big houses, but they've chosen to go out there to reach out to those who don't know Christ. And so the best we can do is pray for them and support them financially. So I encourage you, if you want to give to New Life Fellowship, if you want to sow in this vineyard, we pledge to be good stewards of your money, uh, to do well with it, not to use it to, you know, do crazy things and lavish, uh, make ourselves rich. You know, it's, it's really going towards the things of God. And you can give in so many ways. On, on the website, there's a giving tab. Very simple. It's safe and secure. Uh, there's Cash App. For those of you who love Cash App, there's Zelle, all of that stuff. So that's how you can give your offering here at church. But otherwise, when we start praising and worshiping our God, if you have a cash offering, we will have a basket in the front here and we'll be praising and worshiping pretty soon. We had some time of singing at the beginning, but that was just uh, the appetizer. We got to spend some time jumping and praising. The Bible says, make a joyful noise. That's why we shout sometimes. But people wonder, why do you scream so much when you sing and praise? Because the Bible says, make a joyful noise. So it's okay to sing softly, but there are times where you can sing aloud. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. You know, we do all these things. The same way you go to a football game and you're cheering and you're screaming for your team. It's the same way we scream for our Jesus because he's done so many great things for us. That's why we praise. And we will do that in just a bit. But before we praise, and I know we're kind of moving on with our schedule here. It's been a special day, Father's Day. So just hang tight, bear with us. Uh, so it's a little long today, but that's okay. I'd like to call up, we have a testimony in the house. I'd like to call Dr. Ambrose. I wanted to come up here one more time. So Uncle Ambrose, I like to refer to him as Uncle Ambrose. He has a testimony, so come tell us what God has done in your life. And may it be an encouragement to those of you out there. Good morning, church. Today is a very good day for me. First of all, I want to give you a testimony. And then, today is Father's Day. I'm a father. Before I start my testimony, I would like to give two, two scriptures. The first one, which I like very much, is Jeremiah 3, verse 3. That's the phone number of God. Call me. I will answer you and show you great things that I will not know. The second one is Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. It's trust in the Lord with all your heart. I know it on your understanding. Your own understanding. So these two scriptures, I will use it now to tell you what I want to say. The first thing I want to say is that I left, I came to this country in 1978, studied, I went back to Cameroon. While in Cameroon, I was lucky, I had many positions, I rose up to the level of director. And I got retired. Luckily, my daughter came here, who was delivered here. He, she brought us back here. And since I came, I started looking for a job. Now, my friend, Pastor Kane, we have been friends for 45 years. We knew her since 1976, and today, see, today we're together. So before, when Ruthie was supposed to get married, we were looking for a place to, do, to, do, uh, to host people for, for, for reception. And now landed in Shadawiji Tenaga College, College, where I've been teaching now, or teaching now for almost uh, more than 10 years. When we went there, now that's when I said, since I just came in for a job. So I went to one of the buildings and they gave me a form to fill. After I found a place for the reception for the wedding of Pastor Emma and, and Ruthie. 
I filled that form and I was recruited at Chedewuji College, Chedewuji Technical College. I was recruited as a part-time part -time, uh, teacher or instructor. I started looking for a job full-time, no way. The dean who recruited me was a Christian and he loved me very much and trusted me. He told when he was about to leave, she, was, she became president of a university some other place. And the person who came to take over from her, she told the man, this guy has experience. He worked, he studied in this country, went back to Africa, he came, rose up to the director, use him, he has knowledge. The new dean came, and instead, when he saw my resume, he was avoiding me. Opposition came for jobs, he, for full time. If he was always there as a head, he never took me. So for all these years, I've now had a full time job. Part time, 30 hours, it went to 20 and to 15. Imagine me working 15 hours in America with the family that I have. That's what I've been going through. And 15 hours, especially when this pandemic came. Now, as we were praying, as I thought about calling God, uh, God's calling, my wife and myself have been praying for a long time now for my children because it was stagnation. I cannot go to school in America, I come back and I don't have a full time job. So we started praying and I got stimulated to go back to school. Even my old age, when I got a master's degree in 1982, about 40 years ago. I was supposed to have a, a, a PhD in about 1984, 80, I mean 87 or 88. But as God started praying, I, had, I got motivated, I had to go back to school at old age. And I got my doctorate at this old age. More than 70 years. I'm more than 70. So now the doctors begin to, to yield the fruits. That's what I'm, I'm getting to now. So I, as we pray, I started praying, we, um, I started applying for jobs after I got the doctorate. Now I have so many universities looking for me. The unfortunate thing is that they want to recruit me as part time, but I don't mind because I taught in three universities in, in Yahoo, in Cameroon, part time, Boya, Faculty of Medicine, and Catholic University, part time, part time. But I was working in, in the government ministry. So for now, I got, I signed a, a contract with Brandman University in California, uh, who has a relationship with the University of Massachusetts. But it's still part time. Second one, I have signed a contract with uh, Mid American Christian University in Oklahoma. Wow. Still part time. And then Columbia University recruited, uh, interviewed me in New York. TV University in, uh, in Ohio, they also wanted to recruit me. But I said to myself, I can't handle all this part time, part time. <laughs> so, two of them that I'm still doing part time now, and I have to tell you, part time is online. I will not leave here to go to California or to Oklahoma. I'm still here. I'm going to be here with you. Wow. But one other thing is that I have to thank God for Pastor Emmanuel. Even with my doctorate, he was always available, giving me time. Time is not only, no, giving is not money, only money. Giving is time. He always give, whenever I call him, he will always be around to help me with IT problems because I'm an old man. To get to teach people in, on computer, it was hard for me, but the university has trained us, spending one full month, each of the universities, intensive training for the whole of us who are being recruited. I think we're about 21 or something on, online. I see all my colleagues all over America. We're giving us exams, tests. If you don't have 85 over 100, they drop you. But I had 95 over 100. So that's why the many universities are looking for, and my GPA was very high. So that's why I want to give this testimony today to thank God and thank all of you for prayers. I pray with my family. He has always been praying for me. He wants me to get a job with the, with the CDC. He has been praying for me. He knows my talents. He knows what I can do. So that's my testimony for today. And I thank God for all of you. I want to pray, ask you to pray for me that I should not be only doing part-time. Part-time in Cameroon for three universities. America now has also almost three universities. For Brimman University, I started teaching last, last month. For the uh, Mid-American Christian University, I was starting in July. Only part-time. I also pray that, I pray that you pray for me that they should maintain me and I have a full-time job, one of them. Thank you. God bless you, Brother Ambrose. What a testimony. See, when God starts blessing you, it gets overwhelming. You can't even handle it. See, he's like, all these jobs are coming. I can't handle all these jobs again. It's been a while. 
We got to hear that sweet voice. And after she's done, Sister Annie, you can come up and give us a word of exhortation. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is too low. Praise the Lord. Amen. He has given you a voice and he wants to hear it. God is good. And all the time, as you can tell, I love my grandchildren. I love my grandchildren. I went to, <laughs> to take care of my grandchildren for about two months and a few, we, uh, one week. And it was a wonderful time. It's just, it's just that I gained so much weight, <laughs> which I have to work hard to lose that weight. So I'm so grateful. I just want to thank God for the ladies of this church. I don't know how to thank you guys. The Bible says in um, Mark chapter 9 verse 41. For whoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ. Verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. For everyone who cooked for my husband, especially this pastor who has dedicated his life to Jesus. Anyone who put a pot on the fire, say, I'm going to give pastor, you will not lose your reward. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You will not lose your reward. I believe it. My husband would tell me, say, Pearl, I have so much food, I don't know what to do. I, need, I really need to give these boys the food to eat. He had so much food. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful to be back. Amen. Amen. And for the men of the church, happy Father's Day. Amen. Yes. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow my example as I follow Christ. Follow my example as I follow Christ. So you should be an example to your children as you follow Christ. That's all I can say. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Happy Father's Day once again to all our lovely fathers in the house. I have few uh, Bible passages that we're going to read just to celebrate our Father. So let's go into the Word. Jeremiah 17, verse 7. It is written Amen. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Proverbs 17, verse 6. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Proverbs 20, verse 7. The righteous will walk in his integrity. Blessed are his children after him. Psalms 103 verse 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Proverbs 23 verse 24. The father of a righteous son will rejoice greatly. And the one whose father, who fathers a wise son will delight in him. And the final one. Ephesians 6 verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Amen.
father who will never ever fail me I have a father who will never ever fail me Jesus is that father who will never ever fail me Rock of ages never ever never ever fail I have a father
with me. Come on.
awesome in this place we can sense your love we can sense your presence we can sense your power we can sense everything is about you thank you for giving us the favor to worship you to adore you to magnify you to praise you from the depths of our being we want to obey you now by breaking bread, an institution that you established for the church. I would like the communion elements to be passed around at this time. I thank God for today. I thank God for Pastor Emmanuel. Uh, I don't get into the programming of the church. He does it and I just let him go, have a free ride. I'm so pleased when I sit back and I see things happen. I'm so grateful. Um, just one word about the Father who is in heaven. When we're about to come to the States, we're both colleagues at the university. And um, he left Chang 
with so much food in his truck. Brought it to you on the way I was and brought, a, gave me a loan of 50 $100 bills. Brand new, they were crisp. Never touched a dollar bill before. <laughs> that shiny. And uh, I remember him fondly. I remember once as an elder in a church in Yaoundé, somebody died. And the relatives of that guy were mocking him. Can you imagine somebody's corpse and you're mocking the corpse? I accidentally ran into him in the heart of the city. And I said, Brian, for Brian, he stopped. said, Oh, Brian Willie, Brian Willie, what's up? I said, We have problems. I hear that a brother of ours has died, and the relatives are mocking him. I said, Let this your Jesus come and help. He said, Brother, I have money here with me. You're an elder, take it and use it for the funeral. So I walked into that place. At the time, I was not as mature as I am now in the Lord. And I came and announced to the people, I said, you guys who think that we don't have people, we are going to celebrate this funeral more than any funeral you've seen. We have the money and your mouth will be shut up. <laughs> well, again, that was flesh. you know. And today I will not do a thing like that. Um, but that's what took place. Um, so if you talk about Professor Yafo's generosity, I know it firsthand. You see, there are three kinds of people in the church in terms of giving, and people should listen to me now. Three. There are those who give their remains. Have you heard me? Yes. Those who give what? Their or their leftovers. They come to church and they give their leftovers. There are those who give tithe. They use their eyes and they use their mind and say, this is what I receive. And because I receive this amount of money, this is what I've decided to give to the church based on my reason. Have you heard me? Yes. You, many are in that class in the church. The third group are those who are generous. They give by revelation. Revelation means they do not look at how much they have. They ask God, how much do you want me to give you? Those are the type of people who are supposed to serve in the finance committee of the church. As far as I'm concerned. The generous ones. Who do not say, I'm going to give according to how much I make. I'm going to give according to how God reveals to me. So there are those who give leftovers. One category. The second category those who give from reason, this is how much I have and this is how much I'm going to give to the Lord. This is what I've made up my mind. There's nothing wrong with that. But that those who are generous. I pray that God will flood generosity on me and you today in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a project here to do and maybe God will touch your heart to meet this project. Will you say amen with me? Amen. That said, I'd like us to stand. <clears throat> We don't break bread here because it's a custom. We do things in this church because God has commanded us to do that. God says whenever you meet, break bread. You're not breaking bread for a church or for a person. You're breaking bread because you've been commanded to do that. In remembrance of his death, of his burial, and of his resurrection. Can we say amen to that? Yeah. That's why we break bread every Sunday. Because we meet as God's children and God has commanded us to do that. So every time I do this, I remember the great sacrifice that Jesus had for me. And even if you and I were the only people on planet earth, he would have still died for that one person. If you are that person today, lift up your the wafer, and I'll ask my brother, Pastor Bakke, to please pray from behind. They just pray.
Pastor. Let's eat all of it, please. Take the cup. This is the cup of the new covenant. The old is obsolete. The new, stainless blood of Jesus is shed for us. I'll ask Brother Edwin to please pray that any sicknesses, any diseases, whatever it is that you're suffering from, will be broken today in Jesus' name. Please, Brother Edwin, pray. Amen. Let's drink of it and believe God. Believe who? Believe All it takes is the word of God. If you are sick, say, I am healed. I say, I'm healed. I am healed. I'm healed spiritually. I'm healed, spiritually. I'm healed cognitively. I'm healed, cognitively. I'm healed physically. I'm healed, physically. I'm healed emotionally. I'm healed emotionally. I'm healed financially. I am healed, financially. I am healed relationally. I am healed relationally. I believe God's word. I believe God's word. And I receive it. And I receive it. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Drink all of it. Please, you may be seated. We are about to pray. I beg you to stretch your hands towards me and ask the Lord that I will declare the oracles of God and that you who is receiving the message will receive it in the spirit of Christ. If people receive the messages and they are thinking otherwise, it's not of God. When we receive the word of God, we say, yes, I embrace God. Can you stretch your hands towards me, please, and pray? Pray for me. Sister Yabo, please pray for me on behalf of the people and I'll pray for you. Go ahead. Yes. Amen. 
And Father, I pray for everybody listening to the sound of my voice that you will speak clearly. Hide me behind your cross. Father, I pray I will never be remembered but your word which is settled in heaven will resonate in the hearts of people and will make them grow like a weed in Jesus' name. For those of you who are new with us, we are going through a series called Shape. Shape. When God created you, he gave you a shape. S, which is the first letter of this acrostic. The word S. If you are not born again, you are not a child of God. You don't have that S. How do you obtain the S? It's very simple. Very simple. You obtain the S by giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes and abides and dwells in you. I have studied 18 major religions in the world. 18. Christianity is the only so quote unquote religion that is different from all the others. All other religions are performance or work based. Meaning they want to get to God. They want to please God. They want to do things that God will accept them. But the good news is that Jesus didn't come with a religion. He came because the Father wanted a relationship with us. He left heaven and came to earth to us. Big difference. One is trying to go up and he will never get to, Jesus, to God. But God came down. If you forget every other thing, don't forget that. Are you depending on your strength? And your intellect and your possessions to get to God, to make God happy, it doesn't work. The only thing that works is for you to accept the gift of God from heaven in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the difference in the world. So when you meet people, no matter what you do, tell them about the love of God. The Bible says faith, hope, and love are the three eternal values. But the greatest of them all is love. Are we happy with that? Yes. Give me a wave offering. So, we are dealing with a series called SHIP. As you can see on the transparency, it stands for spiritual gifts. It stands for God's character, God's character or if somebody can look that up, whether it's in Spanish or English, and tell us. But it makes no sense for me or to me. What is happy? I don't know what that means. Hap. It's no word. So you, a human being is not complete until God fills that vacuum that he has created for himself. That's why Ezekiel said that I'll give you a new heart and a new spirit. When you get a new spirit, you get a new heart. And that heart doesn't refer to uh, Dr. Gracie's uh, heart that she deals with. It's not the human heart. It's the spiritual heart. Will you say amen with me? Amen. So, H stands for the heart. Heart is the desires, the interests, and the passions that we have. Then we have A for abilities. Your natural talents that you are born with. And then we have your personality which we're going to talk about today. Your personality is made up of your spiritual gifts, your heart's desires, your natural abilities, and your life's experiences. And that's what we'll be dealing with next Sunday. So come and listen to the last message on this. Today we'll be focusing on my personality. Will you say amen with me? Why did God give you a personality? First, I want to declare here very clearly that you have a unique personality. 
People who have been born before you don't have it. People who are living now, they don't have it. People who be born after you, they don't have it. God does not make carbon copies. God makes originals. Turn to somebody and say to somebody, you are an original. You are an original. Tell them well, you are an original. My personality consists of my spiritual gifts, my natural abilities, my heart desires, my ambitions, my life's experiences. And what is the purpose, the singular purpose, why I'm giving the personality that I have, which is different from others. On Wednesday, we'll be talking about what science teaches. Science talks about introverts and extroverts and they lump people together. God doesn't lump us together. God deals with us as individuals. That's the difference between who, 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 who believe in science. No, no, no. Believe in your science. I believe in the word of God. If you go home, look for what human beings, look at how human beings define personality. It is short of the definition that we get from the Bible. Will you say amen with me? That's why I love this book. Now, in order to do, to use my personality, God gives me four commands. The four commands are in, taken from Mark 12, verse 30. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It is written, Amen. you must love the Lord your God. Remember we said love is the greatest, faith, hope, and love. You must love the Lord your God with the first thing, your heart. It says, not with all, don't, don't leave the word all, with all your heart. And with all your soul. And with all your mind. And with all your strength. Four things. God would love him from here with that. But the bad news is that we human beings are flawed. We all have flawed personalities, all of us. Will you say amen with me? Let me read to you a couple of passages. I don't know if Ruth is ready. Okay, good. Uh, I'd like Ruth to come up here and read for us. I like... I like to hear her read. Praise the Lord. There are three passages. The first one is Galatians 4, 1 and 2. All from the New Living Translation. Then she will read to us. No, first of all, it's four, James 4. James 4, 1 and 2. There are three passages to read. James 4, 1, 1 to 3. Then there's Galatians 5, 17. And then somebody who wrote 13 of these books, 13, 13 of these books, he tells you his struggles, why we are flawed. Okay, please come. Start with James 4, 1 to 3. James 4, 1 to 3, it is written. Amen. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Huh? What is causing the quarrels and fights among who? You. Where do quarrels come from? Tell us. Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? Wow. They come from within, not from without. Go ahead. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. Hmm. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Thank you. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Did you hear that? My brothers, for you and for me, each one of us, each one of us, are you listening? Problems don't come from outside. Oh, he said that and he did that. It's from within. It's the evil nature in you that brings that out. That brings the it's from within. So from today, don't tell me this man did this or said this. Look at yourself from inside. The Bible is said, I didn't say it. Quarrels, arguments, disagreements come from the Bible, from, your, from within. The Bible says it, it's settled. Read for me, please, Galatians 5.17. Galatians 5.17. 
Galatians 5, 17. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. Okay. We all inherited from Adam the sinful nature. If somebody is not born again, hear me clearly. If you are not born again, you don't have the next thing they're talking. The sinful nature works in you every time. Go ahead. And the spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. Now, the moment you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, as we said in Ezekiel, you have a new heart and a new spirit. And that spirit is the spirit of God. Now, what happens to these two things that are in you who is a Christian? What happens? Listen to it. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. Wait, wait, wait. They are sometimes fighting each other. Constantly. Oh, weekly. Constantly. Yearly. Constantly. Thank you, people. Constantly. No rest. Just like you breathe. The same thing happens. We breathe. These things are fighting all the time. Go ahead. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. So you are not free to do what? Carry to out carry out your, your good, good intentions. intentions. It happens within, not outside of you. Go ahead. Okay, that's the verse. Okay, now let us see what happened in the life of Paul. How did Paul deal with these two situations? Amen? Amen. How did Paul deal with these two situations of the spirit man and the sinful man fighting inside of them? How did he deal with it? I want you to listen carefully and follow up because if you get this, you got the whole message. You got, you got the person why you do the things that you do. Why are you sometimes are irritable? Something happens, you, you jump at people. It is from within. It is from where? Within. Not Sister Marlene or brother. No. You. It's from inside you. Okay, continue. Romans, Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 25. I'd like us to get this clearly. Because if we do, we are fine. Go ahead. So the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. Did you hear that? Yes. God's laws are what? Good. To the unbeliever, God's laws are bad. Mm -hmm. The unbeliever says, oh, why don't I can, I, can I not cheat a little bit on my wife? Why can't I steal? Why can't I lie? Why can't I gossip? Talk about people. Talk, talk, talk. Why? They don't like it. But for the righteous person, who you are, it's good. Go ahead. The trouble is with me. <sighs> for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Hey, Instead, say that again, say that again. Paul said, I don't really understand myself. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. All right. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Hey, do we hear that? Yes. Every time I do something that's wrong, every time I gossip, every time I'm irritable, every time I'm offended about things, it is a sin in me that does those things. Yeah. Hello? What is doing that thing? The sin in me. Not in you. Go ahead. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I have discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Question. Who will free us? Who will free us? Now comes the good news. Who will free you? Please read. Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Stop. Can we give the Lord a club offering, please? Thank you. That's enough. 
We don't have a problem that God cannot solve. Not one. It is my, my stubbornness. It is my pride. It is my ego. But if I submit to the spirit of God in me, everything changes. Let me give you a verse that you should take home. That you should run with it to the bank. The verse is taken in Romans 8.2. It is written, For the power of the life-giving spirit. The what? The power of the life-giving spirit. Again, say it. The power of the life-giving spirit. Where does that power of the life-giving spirit dwell? Inside. In where? In me. For a believer. That's why if you are not a Christian, forget it. Accept Christ. That's it. For the Christian, you have the life-giving spirit dwelling in, in you. Raise your right hand. Say, Lord, Lord I, thank you I thank you that your life-giving spirit, your life spirit dwells, in dwells in me. And I praise you for it. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Will you say amen with me? Amen. And what does it do? It gives you freedom. It sets you free through Jesus Christ from the power of sin that leads to death. You want to have the power of sin that leads to death? You want to have something that is powerful that will lead you not to death but to life? You have the life-giving spirit where? In me. Not outside. Not in a church or whatever they call it, building. That life-giving spirit dwells in you. If you can only take that today, you have, you've had the best part of the meal. Christianity is not about negative things. Christianity is about identifying what is bad and showing you the good. Minds that are made of Christ, when you have the mind of Christ, it will reflect on the life-giving spirit that dwells in me. Will you say amen? So what are the four ways that God wants you to obey him? The verse I read to you in Mark is not a suggestion. It is a command. And the command has four specific areas. The first way we communicate, we communicate love to God from our hearts. Is that okay? God gave you a new heart, the spiritual heart, that you now communicate with him. God gave you a new spirit the spirit of God that communicates with him. God gave you a new mind, the mind of Christ that communicates with him. Everything is a gift, 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 gift. Will you say amen with me? Amen. That's why we have many talkers. People come, they talk a lot. Example, pastors, TV anchors, teachers, radio announcers, you name it. Hallelujah. Amen. These are talkers. They communicate. Communication is very good. Without communication, I will not understand you. You won't understand what I'm saying. Is that true? The Bible says, for the righteous, the words of the wise bring healing. Are your words bringing healing? Do you go around intentionally, consciously saying, I will bring healing to people I speak to? Again, I'm not setting up myself as an example. I just want to give you a few things. When I leave my house and I'm going out, I purpose in my heart that I will speak words of blessing to people. Every day. I pray and I do it. So if you meet me and you're a stranger, you will live happier. I purpose it in my heart. I determine to do it. That's why when I get to some stores, I said, today everything here is for free. And everybody says, whoa. Then some smart ladies will say, ah, not today, you came late. Hallelujah. And the other people are laughing. Ah, is this, what is this old man coming around telling me everything's for, for free? All right. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 13, the words of the wise keep people out of trouble. How many people have you kept out of trouble? Because of your words. And the verse that's up there reads, I have not kept this good news hidden in my heart. Instead, I've talked, don't what? Talker. 
have talked about your faithfulness. You see what I'm talking about? Not about themselves. About his faithfulness. Is God faithful to you? Yes, he is. Turn to somebody and say, God is faithful to me. And saving power. I have told everyone of your unfailing love and faithfulness. If you get two characteristics of God, his love is unfailing. His love is unending. His love is uh, it, it's, it's beyond measure. His love is uh, undeniably uh, uncommon. That is the love of God. Hallelujah. And then, God is always what? Faithful. I may be faithful. I may promise somebody here that I'll do this. I don't do it. And they'll be angry. Oh, but you said, you pastor, you said. God doesn't deal with us in that way. He remains constant. He remains faithful. That's why you should love this God. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 4010. What is the purpose of communication? Very quickly, we all know it, to praise God, to worship him, to adore him. From our hearts, not from our carnal hearts, but from the new heart. Hello? Every believer has two kinds of heart. They have the carnal heart, which is wicked, and they have the godly heart. That Ezekiel talked about. I'll give you a new heart, and I'll give you a new spirit. Will you say amen with me? Amen. So Psalm 71... Psalm 71 verse 20 says, my mouth shouts his praise. Hallelujah. Amen. I remember pastor saying something earlier. He said, we shout here. No, no, no. In church, in church you should be. Mm. Mm. Not in this group. We shout unto the Lord with a song of triumph. We shout unto the Lord with praises. We adore God with all of our being, with all of our personality. We adore God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in, in Luke 6, 45, out of the abundance of the heart, my mouth speaks. What kind of speech comes out of the abundance of the heart? Is it bitterness, wickedness, grumbling, complaining? Is that what comes out? Tell yourself, enough is enough. I will allow the good things to come in my heart. Things that encourage, things that praise, things that build up people. Not all the negativity. I'm tired. Will you say amen with me? What is the caution for people who speak a lot? There are some people when they get into a place, they start speaking from morning till evening, they don't allow you to speak. Can we get advice today from God's word? Brethren, when we say these things, it's not just of saying it. Go and put it into practice. Amen. I know some people who, who um, speak a lot. They come to a place. They have to monopolize the talking. Stop, stop, stop. Let it end today in Jesus' name. Amen. Stop it. Are you the only one? Hear the advice. Proverbs 17, 27 says, A truly wise person uses few words. Uses how much? Words. If you are somebody with blah, 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 Truly, if you are wise, use a few words. Brother Remy came up here today. A few words. And he went. Do we enjoy it? Yes. Let us use few words. A person with understanding is even tempered. Brethren, the Bible says, in the midst of our much talking, we make a lot of mistakes. Yes. Is that true? Yes. If it's true, wave at me. Hallelujah. And now... The verse which is on the screen says, Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Will you say amen? amen? That is relationship with God. When you are talking to God, God is in heaven, you are on earth. Let your words be what? Few. Few. And when you talk to other people, here's the verse, Colossians 3, 6. Let your speech always be with what? Grace. Oh, we have a grace in the house. Hallelujah. Oh, two. Hallelujah. 
two graces and extreme polarities. Let, let your speech always be with grace. Look at the grace and smile at them. Hallelujah. Smile at them. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Seasoned with what? Salt. That you may know how you ought to answer what? Each one. You know what? People talk to us. Immediately we start speaking. Sometimes we don't even listen to what people are saying. We start speaking. You are a bad speech person in that area. Change. Don't just say, oh, good message. Change. Hallelujah. If that is your weakness, change. How do you change? There's a prayer for you. It's found in Psalms 19 verse 14. If I have that problem of talking too much, here is the, the, the answer. Psalms 19 verse 14. Let the meditation of my where? Of my heart. And the words of my mouth be acceptable to you. Oh Lord. Lord help me that as I speak, after, this, after this, this, I will not go to people and tell them negative things. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to complain about Sayabo or about this. Stop. It's enough. Enough is enough. Leave that life alone. Let's move forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's take this word seriously. Speak things that will build people up. Oh, I love your hair. Oh, you are, my God. You, you, are, you are a gorgeous, beautiful lady. Hallelujah. And you say from your heart, you mean it. Be a blessing with your mouth. Will you say amen? amen. Edify others who hear you. Number two. We've talked about talkers. Talkers and heart. Connect. You say what is from your heart. Talkers and heart. Let's go to the next one. That God commands us. We must be compassionate. We must compassionately love God with our souls. A person of compassion is somebody who is moved with their feelings. When people are uh, doing um, drug trafficking, when they sell women from the island into slavery, that should bother you. That should bother you. You can't say, oh, well, no. It's something done to somebody creating the image of God. Jesus Christ, when he went to cities and he looked over them, our Bible says he had compassion on them. The compassion of God is what we are supposed to have. And we have the spirit of God in us. That gives us that compassion. That compassion is desires. The Bible says, delight yourself where? In the Lord. And what will he do? He will give you the desires of your heart. Again, it's not your their negative or my negative desires. Because I've consulted him, I've tapped into his desires, I'll be, it, will, it will now become my desires. Right. If I abide in him and he abides in me, what happens? I'll do what? We have the same desires. I am in him and he is in me. The answer to the equation is I have God's desires. Un point, entre. Full stop. Praise the name of Jesus. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul longs for you, O God. Every day our souls should be yearning for God. We should be delighting in God every day. Every moment of our life we delight in him. Praise the name of Jesus. How do I show I delight in God? I show it by what pastor said earlier. T-I-M-E. I spend time with him. In his word. Amen. I spend time with him in prayers. I spend time listening to his voice and promptly obeying him. Will you say amen? amen? So we are asking for the compassion of God towards others. And what does the Bible tell us in Ephesians 4.32? Be kind and compassionate to each other. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So many people have very stony hearts, very 
they, they can't, they cannot, you do something to them, they will remember it for centuries. Two, two weeks ago, you preached this. You, but you preached that. You, I remember it. I was hurt. Yesterday, you said this to me. You wrote this to me. Where is the compassion? We did everything wrong against God. Yet God showed us his compassion. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Do not make any decisions based on your feelings. For instance, somebody will say, well, um, um, I don't feel like going to the house of God today. Hello? You don't depend on your feelings. Oh, I don't feel like greeting her. I don't feel like greeting him. I don't feel like. Don't depend on your feelings. They're not good for you. Will you say amen with me? Quickly, number three. Be considerate. God wants to use your intellect. How many people like people who have invented things? Have created things? And many of you here have the same ability to create. On the prayer line that our pastor led on Saturday, we zeroed in on asking people what they wanted God to do for them. Amen? It was a beautiful time of prayer. Come on Saturday mornings and join us in prayer. And people said, I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to be this. And we prayed for them. That they will achieve what God has put in their hearts. Will you say amen? So, considerate people are people who use their minds. The world needs all classes of people who are inventors, creators, architects, innovators. God gave you a mind to help the world. How I love your law. What happens with your mind? I think about it sometime. Hello? I think about it only once a week. I think about your law all day long. May God help our minds to think about his holy law every day in Jesus' name. Amen. When you purpose in your heart to be considerate, you relate to people differently. Turn with me to Philippians for those who have Bibles or whatever you have. To get to it. Let me read to you very quickly. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2 to 5. Philippians 2, 2 to 5. It is written. Amen. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one, one heart and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't think all about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and what they are doing. Finally, your attitude should be the same as that, be the same that Christ Jesus had. Will you say amen with me? We should think about the way we live and turn back to the Lord. The bad thing with intellect, for people who are so bright, not very many of them are humble. Hello? People who are bright, they usually tend to look low on others who are not as bright as them. People who have professions like brain surgeons, heart surgeons, and so on, very few of them are as humble as our daughter. Very few. They'll puff up and make sure that everybody knows God says, I hate a proud attitude. Will you say amen? amen. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 8.1 from the Good Word Translation, knowledge makes people arrogant, but love builds them up. Hello? Amen. Two things. See me? I'm up. You are down. Knowledge makes people to puff up, but not faith, not hope, but love people up. 
Will you say amen? amen? So what should we practice? Humility. Can I say something to you very quickly? Humility is a choice. I choose to be humble. Nobody can do that for me. I choose to be humble. Let's be careful not to look down on others, on their professions, or what they do. If you go to the airport and meet a shoe shiner, you don't look low on him because he shines shoes. Respect him. If he shines a shoe, give him a good tip. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. But let us know, Hebrews 13, 21, God will equip you with all you need for doing his will. Will you say amen? amen. The last one, and we close. Be a contributor. Be somebody who contributes in society. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Contributors love God by contributing something in the, to the world. You see, you've been brought in this planet or on this planet in order to do something for others. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I think of my daughter there, the nurse. She's there out serving them. Even during COVID, they serve. I used to remember Sayabo came here and said, oh, in my floor, there's so many COVID patients. They are there to serve. They are giving of themselves with the risk that they are taking. Do something for other people. What will people remember you for? What will people remember you? A grumbler? A gossiper? A cheat? As a child of God, say, that is not my portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Say it. Say it. Tell somebody, that is not your portion in Jesus' name. The caution here about working. Some people have turned themselves into workaholics. Hear what God says. In an attempt to contribute your own quarter to the people and the society that you live in, two verses, Proverbs 23, 4, says, don't wear yourself out trying to get what? Rich. Is it bad to be rich? Is it bad to be rich? Please, if you are rich, give us money. We want to build Christ campus. It costs four million. Four million to begin. Give us the money. Will you say amen? amen? Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to show restraint. Some people do three, four, five jobs. And they boast about it. That's not God's will for you. No, not at all. You can't prove it to me in the Bible. You can't. I've been reading this book now for 21 years. You can't prove it. Listen to what the Bible also says in Psalms 127 verse 2. It is useless. It is how? Useless. For you to work so hard from, even, from early morning until later night, fearing you will, you will starve to death. For God wants his loved ones to get their proper rest. There's time to work and there's time to rest. We need to balance. Can we stand? I always like him to go and close the meeting. He says I should do it. Okay. Um, we want to plead with those who are listening with us and those who are here who don't know Jesus Christ. We just want to plead that the best thing you can do to your life is to give that life back to the one who gave you that life. Very simple. Don't try on your own to reach God. Don't try and do good things. Don't try and impress people. Amen. Oh, people, I want to make people... No, no, don't do that. Try to impress one man. Your God. Amen. Amen. Amen? Try to impress your God and everything else will fall in place. So if you are listening to this message, we are asking you to receive what God has sent from heaven in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just accept him into your heart. If that is your desire, please pray aloud this prayer with me. Holy Father... I come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. 
please come and take residence and precedence in my life. I want to make you Lord of my life. From this day forward, in Jesus' name. If you have said this prayer from your heart, because God sees where? Not the external, the heart. If you said that prayer from your heart, on the basis and the authority of the word of God, you are saved. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us hold our hands to receive the benediction. We like to read the word of God to come to your heart. I could say a prayer, but that prayer is not as powerful as getting the benedictions from, from heaven. Amen? Amen? And now, all glory to God, who is able to keep you from stumbling, and who will bring you into his glorious presence, innocent of sin, and with great joy, all glory to him, who alone is God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, glory, majesty, power, and authority belong to him in the beginning, now, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Let's give God the best clap offering. Please, there are guests in our midst, make sure you greet them in Jesus' name.